Hey, I'm Sandra. Today we're looking at building this bar top arcade. I'm going to show you how I did it myself. No, I'm kidding. I'm still here. So before I get into anything, this video will be broken down into three main parts. The first part will be the build of the cabinet, the second part will be the electronics, and the last part will be setting up all of the software. So before getting started on this project, I did a lot of research. I looked at what a lot of other people did online and used that to my benefit. Now I did find a template online and use this to make the main shape of my cabinet. I will link the PDF templates in the description. I started this project off using half inch MDF. I taped the template onto this and used this as a cutting reference. Once the first side panel was cut, I then clamped it to the sheet of MDF and used this as a routing template. This will ensure that both pieces will be exactly the same. Once the side panels were cut, it was then time to cut the other pieces. I set up the table saw fence to my desired width and use this to cut all of the other pieces. This way I can ensure that everything will be cut exactly the same width. If you cut down all the pieces you need right now, you won't have to remeasure out the fence and the table saw. The next step was to assemble the pieces. I started with the side panel, the front, and the bottom. This way I was able to get some support. I held everything together using brad nails and wood glue. The brads allow me to continue working without having to wait for the wood glue to dry. Now it can be tricky to get the first few pieces together, but once they're up, the sum of all the pieces will hold this thing nice and strong. I am adding a lip that will allow for the marquee to be held in place. Now before I finish off the lip around the marquee, I have to finish the bottom panel where the speakers are going to go. I drilled out the holes and used a jigsaw to cut them out. Once that was done, I then assembled the rest of the marquee. The next step was to prepare the monitor. I took apart all the unnecessary plastic in the stand and then measured and cut out where I needed to put the monitor. One thing I found very useful for cutting out the monitor hole was to use the plastic bezel as a measuring tool. This will allow you to get the proper size you need. Once the hole was cut out for the screen, I then had to find a way to mount the screen into the cabinet. By using some scrap wood and some pocket holes, I created a custom screen mount. Now I made sure not to glue this in, hence the reason for the pocket holes. The reason for this is if anything happens to this monitor, I want to be able to replace it. Now one thing to note, it's not ideal to be mounting the monitor right now because you still have to paint and sand and do all of that stuff. So if you can find a way to do this at another step, I would suggest doing that. However, it did work doing it this way. I patched up some of the brad nail holes and then cut out a hole for these handles that I had from an old karaoke machine. The next step was to drill out the holes for the joystick and the buttons. I printed out the template and used this as a reference for drilling the holes. I then began to sand down the cabinet and made a back panel for it as well. To attach the back panel, I created these little nub pieces using scrap wood that I can screw into. I then cut out the hole for the power switch as well as some remaining buttons. Once this was done, I then added one coat of primer to prepare it for painting. And to paint, I used some standard glossy black to paint the entire cabinet. Now again, not the most ideal time to be doing this, but I then cut the slots using a slot bit in my router. These slots will be used for the T molding. Unfortunately, this bit had come in the mail after I had painted the cabinet. The next step was to do all of the artwork. I designed all of this artwork using Illustrator and sent it to a local printer to print it out. Now to save money what I did is I printed it on laminated poster board and did everything on one sheet. I applied this to the cabinet using spray adhesive and a lot of patience. Now by applying the adhesive myself, the overall result wasn't too bad. However, I did end up with a couple of air bubbles. Once the artwork was complete and stuck on, it was time for the T-molding. I cut notches around the poster paper to form around the curves of the cabinet. From here I applied some glue and began to tap in the T-molding with the mallet. Once that was done, I then moved on to doing the marquee. How I did this is I took two pieces of plastic and I sandwiched the image between the two. I then held this into the cabinet by using two pieces of wood on each side. This will prevent it from falling out. The final step in building this cabinet was to install the handles. Now that all the cabinet building is done, it's then time to move on to making the electronics. This arcade will be simply getting all of its power from this power bar. 
Because the switch from the power bar will be inside of the cabinet, we won't be able to turn it on and off. So what we have to install is an external on-off switch. This switch is going to be located on the outside of the cabinet and will allow the current to either run through or not run through depending on if it's on or off. Very simple. The Raspberry Pi, the LEDs and the speakers will all be attached to this power bar, as well as the monitor. So once you kill all the electricity to the appliances, they'll all shut off at the same time. Once this was done, I then mounted the Raspberry Pi into the cabinet. Because I'm using an old VGA monitor, I needed to buy an adapter to allow it to connect to the HDMI on the Raspberry Pi. I then installed and mounted the speakers. To give the speakers some power, I took apart an old iPod docking station and took out the amp. I then soldered the speakers into it as well as the volume up and down switches. To provide the backlighting for the marquee, I bought some cheap LEDs on Amazon and daisy chained them all together and then allowed them to get plugged into the power bar. I also bought the buttons on Amazon. These came in a very simple two player kit. Now all it was was assembling and daisy chaining all the buttons together and just simply following the instructions. It looks like a big hot mess, but it's actually very simple when you break it down and do it. The buttons all get connected to this control board, which then gets connected to the Raspberry Pi via USB. Once all the buttons were installed, it was then a matter of pressure fitting the control board in. This will allow me to easily access if I need to. The final part is getting all of the software into the Raspberry Pi. This arcade runs on RetroPie. To get RetroPie onto your Raspberry Pi, all you have to do is go onto their website and download it. Once installed, the next step is to load the games onto it. To do this, the first thing you need to do is find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You'll need to connect your Raspberry Pi to Wi-Fi first. Once connected to the internet, you simply go to the RetroPie settings and scroll down to show IP. This will directly show you what your IP address is. Now for Windows users, you're going to simply open up your file explorer, not your web browser, and you're going to type in backslash backslash and your IP address from there. And that should open up the file folders of your RetroPie. From here, you're going to open up the folder called ROMs. Now what you're going to do is take your downloaded ROM that you have acquired legally, of course, and you're going to drop it into one of the folders, depending on which system it is. Once this successfully loads, then your game should be on your Raspberry Pi. So this has got to be one of the coolest things I've built. It's definitely being used and it's super fun to kill time on and play a whole bunch of games that you could go in and spend hours with. Now cost wise it was actually fairly cheap to build and it was a good challenge as well. So if you have any questions or anything I'm always there to help. Feel free to leave a comment and uh, if not then good luck building this. Take it easy. Woo.